Now this is going to be a lesson on bearings and elevations. Now bearings and elevations are two different conventions that we use for measuring angles. Now when you learn about these conventions, they might feel a little bit arbitrary to you, almost like somebody just made them up at random. This is actually a feature and not a flaw. To explain this, I'll give you an analogy. Imagine you had a bar of a specific length. Now if you wanted to measure its length, you'd usually use a ruler. Now depending on where in the world you live, the ruler you use would have different markings on it. The two most common markings you'll find on a ruler today are either feet or meters, but in the past there were many many more. Did you ever stop to wonder what one foot or one meter represents? Like who even came up with it? At some point somebody must have just decided that this length over here is equal to one meter and stuck with it. Now despite the fact that some people prefer to use feet and some prefer to use meters, both of them fulfill the same basic task of measuring distances. So in order for a measurement convention to be successful, it really only needs two things. First off, everybody should agree on the convention. And the second condition is that it's easy to access some kind of device that can help you make that measurement. Now for the case of length, we've actually satisfied both of these conditions. The length of a meter is actually defined by a standards committee and everybody in the world uses the same definition for a meter. And since many manufacturers manufacture rulers and other measuring devices, it's also very easy for people to make measurements using meters or feet. Now I'd like to introduce you to another convention. It turns out that the convention we use to measure angles is very similar to the convention that we use to measure lengths. Now one of the simplest devices we use to measure angles is the compass. Now on every compass there are labels for north, east, south and west which are the four cardinal directions. Now when I was little I used to forget which direction was which. These days I remember the order with a mnemonic, never ever sleepwalk. There are other ones as well like never ever smoke wood or never ever scratch windows, but I always use never ever sleepwalk. Now between the cardinal directions we also have halfway points as well, so northeast is the point halfway between north and east. And we also have northwest, southwest and southeast. Now every working analog compass like this will always have a needle. Now a compass needle is actually a really tiny magnet and it always points towards the earth's north pole. Now in order to actually measure these angles, we always start at the North Pole and go clockwise. Almost every compass has angle markings to help you make these measurements. Now anytime you measure an angle on a compass, we actually call that angle a bearing. We say that if you point directly north, your bearing would just be zero. And bearings are always measured in a clockwise direction from north. You may also hear these kinds of bearings referred to as true bearings as well. So by just looking at the compass right now, it looks like our bearing is approximately 110 degrees. Usually, bearings are not negative numbers. And because of this, bearings are just going to be measured as some number between 0 and 360 degrees. Now there are many applications where bearings are actually used to communicate amongst people. So I'm going to go ahead and give you an example of one right now. Imagine you had two boats that started in roughly the same place. The one on the right decides to go 30 kilometers, and the one on the left decides to travel 50 kilometers. Now suppose that the captain on the right has been heading on a bearing of 50 degrees the entire time, and the captain on the left has been heading on a bearing of 340 degrees the entire time. Now suppose that the captain on the right decides that they want to turn their boat to drive to the captain on the left. In order to make it to the other boat, we'd actually need to find the new bearing of the captain's boat as well as the distance that they'd need to travel. Now the first thing to do would be to simplify the situation so it's a little bit easier to solve. Now first off, I did actually copy this angle on the right over here, but I decided not to copy the angle on the left. The reason I did this is because this angle over here is just 20 degrees, and it's going to be a lot easier to work with 20 degrees than 340 degrees, so let's copy that on instead. Now the next thing to do is to construct a line that points north from where they both started. Now since all three of these point directly north, then it turns out that this angle and this angle are the same as this angle and this angle. And now this just tells us that this whole angle over here is just 70 degrees. Now finally we can go ahead and add the distances on as well. Now to find the distance over here, your first thought would probably be to use the cosine rule. However, 
I'm going to give you an alternative way to do it that you might actually find a little bit easier. Now the first thing to note is that this is a right angle. And that means this angle is complementary to this 20 degrees. So it's just 70 degrees. Now similarly, this angle over here is going to be complementary to this 50 degrees. So that means it's just equal to 40 degrees. Now this diagram is getting really cluttered. So I'll clean it up a little by just removing the angles in the middle over here. Now let me just go ahead and label this bottom side over here M. In order to find this missing side, we can use the cosine of 70 degrees on this triangle on the left. I'm just leaving this K at the bottom down here to remind us that it's 50 kilometers. Now if we just go ahead and multiply both sides by 50 kilometers, we notice that this bottom side is just 50K times the cosine of 70 degrees. If we were to repeat this on the standing side over here, we'd notice that it's also 50K sine 70. Now this side over here would be 30K cos 40 by using this triangle. And this triangle over here would be 30K sine 40. Now we turn our attention to this triangle on the top. Let me go ahead and label the height of it A and the width of it B. Now after I do this, I hope it's clear that this height over here is the same thing as this height over here minus this height over here. If we bring out a calculator, we can find the value of A straight away. Now when you're dealing with bearings, make sure your calculator is in degrees because bearings are measured in degrees. Also, if you have something like K here, you don't really need to write K, you just need to remember to add it back into the final answer. Now using similar reasoning, we can immediately see that this length B over here is exactly the same as this length plus this length. Now that we have the sides of this triangle over here, we can actually go ahead and solve for the distance and the bearing. I'll first start by copying the triangle over. Now to solve for the distance between the two boats, we can just go ahead and use Pythagoras' theorem. Now we can just use the 10 of theta to find this angle over here. I didn't write the k's because they just cross out anyway. Now if we take the arc 10 of both sides, we can actually go ahead and find the angle as well. So now we know that our boat would need to travel in this direction for 48.7 kilometers at an angle of 55 degrees from north. However, this isn't actually a true bearing. To get a true bearing, you'd actually have to find the angle from here to here. So what you'd need to do is you'd need to take 360 and subtract 55.4. And this immediately tells us that the true bearing between our boats is 304.6 degrees. So now we've actually completed our example for bearings. So it's time to look at another kind of angle measurement. Now for the next example, I'm going to draw on a device that we call a clinometer. Now clinometers are special devices that we use to measure angles in the vertical direction. They work by having a freely hanging needle that always points straight down because of gravity. And then over here we have a scale that's also measured in degrees. Now finally, these two little spikes over here are actually used to guide our line of sight so that we can actually use it to make measurements. Now to help you understand this, I'll go ahead and tip this clinometer upwards so that it's pointing at some vertical target. Now we usually use this trigger over here to lock in the angle. Now it turns out that this needle over here is no longer pointing at the original place where it started. In fact, this new angle that it's pointing at is exactly the amount of tilt we applied while actually raising the clinometer. Now the first time I looked at one of these, I didn't really understand how it worked. But I can show you that this angle over here is exactly the same as this angle with a little bit of a geometry trick. The first thing to realize is that this is horizontal and gravity pulls things straight down. That means the angle between these two lines must be a 90 degree angle. Now let's actually go ahead and draw on the angle that the needle makes to the place where it started. Now since the angle from here to here is the right angle, then we can immediately say that the angle from here to here is also 90 minus theta. Now we'll go ahead and label this missing angle alpha. Now because this angle over here is the right angle, we can say that alpha plus 90 minus theta is just the same thing as 90 degrees. And since there's a 90 on both sides, we can just cross them out. After this, we can move this theta to the other side. And this immediately tells us that alpha is just the exact same thing as theta. Now you might actually feel like this is a fair bit of work, and I'd have to agree with you, this is a fair bit of work. So these days we actually have a device in pretty much all of our phones that can do the exact same thing. Now I haven't actually drawn this device anywhere near to scale. The actual size of one of these devices is usually smaller than your fingernail. If we go ahead and show you what's under the cover, 
there's actually a chip inside that can also perform these inclination measurements. This is actually how your phone knows which way is up. Now any angle measured in the up or down direction is called an elevation or a depression. Now for angles of elevation, we say that zero degrees is just the horizontal direction. Then we go ahead and say that elevations are measured counterclockwise and depressions are just angles measured clockwise. Now if we go ahead and look at the angle on our clinometer over here, we can see that it's approximately equal to 30 degrees. Since it points counterclockwise, we also say that it's an angle of elevation. Now I'll give you another example of when you could use an angle of elevation or depression yourself. Suppose you're out stargazing in the middle of the night, and you happen to spot a satellite flying through the sky. Now many telescopes have built-in clinometers, and you read your elevation to be 65 degrees and 22 minutes. Now when you look up the satellite, you notice that it orbits 120 kilometers above the ground. And now you start to wonder how far away the satellite is from you right now. Now given the angle of elevation is 65 degrees and 22 minutes, you can just go ahead and use the sine of theta to help you work this out. Now we can go ahead and swap this d with this sine theta. Now we could just type this directly into the calculator, but there are many calculators that don't have this minute symbol over here. To write this as a decimal, just remember that this is just 65 plus 22 sixtieths. Now this is something that we can put into the calculator really easily. I've just written that this is actually just approximately equal. And now we're actually ready to type this whole thing into the calculator without the k again. And so now we've found that the satellite is just 132 kilometers away. And now we've actually finished our example again. And this actually brings us to the end of our lesson. In this lesson, we introduced two new conventions to measure angles. The first is a bearing that you'd usually use in a horizontal plane. And the second is the angle of elevation and depression, which you'd use to measure in a vertical plane. And now with this, we've actually completed our discussion on bearings and elevations.